To understand what's happening inside a pulse oximeter, start by thinking about what's happening inside your body. Blood carries an iron containing pigment called hemoglobin that transports oxygen from the lungs to other organs. Hemoglobin turns bright crimson when saturated with oxygen and in absence of oxygen it dims to a cold purple red appearance. The oximeter detects this chromatic chemistry by signing two lights, one infrared and the other red, through the finger and sensing how much light comes to the other side. Oxygen saturated hemoglobin absorbs more infrared light and allows more red light to pass through than deoxygenated blood. Adjusting for certain technicalities using a pulse, the device reads out the color of your blood several times a second. This generally lets the oximeter determine the oxygen concentration in your blood. To see your blood, the light must pass through your skin. This should give us a pause since a range of technologies that are based on color sensing is known to produce racial bias. For example, photographic films were widely calibrated for white skin and it often created very distorted images of non-white people until its built-in assumptions started to be acknowledged and reworked. Although people may argue about the low dynamic range, it is possible to have two differentially exposed images of the same person. In 2005, a team of scientists studied oximetry racial bias in critical detail. The group works at the famous mountaintop hypoxia lab present at the University of California, San Francisco, under John Severingus. The lab noted that in their 18 years of testing pulse oximeter accuracy, the majority of subjects have been light skinned. Most pulse oximeters have probably been calibrated using light-skinned individuals with the assumption that skin pigment does not produce enough significant differences. What you should know about assumptions in science is that sometimes they are necessary in the beginning. But as the domain progresses, these assumptions need to be thoroughly tested and accounted for. After hearing about a range of these unacceptable errors in pulse oximetry among black users, the UCSF study was specifically designed to demonstrate whether errors at low arterial oxygen saturation correlate with skin color. Since errors don't tend to show up at healthy oxygen levels, a special protocol is necessary to check the accuracy at lower oxygen levels which better simulates an actual health crisis. The doctors collected readings with a range of people then checked their readings against the gold standard for testing oxygen levels in the blood. This method is more invasive requiring blood from an artery which is why the pulse oximeter is often used as a proxy in hospitals. Cross-checking these two methods over 1067 data points the team found a clear pattern of errors. For non-white people, the machines mostly tend to overestimate saturation levels by several points. The team's follow-up study, published in 2007, focused on safety errors for people with intermediate skin tones and included a larger group of women. This comprehensive data found a clearer pattern. Pearl's oximeter bias was generally greatest for dark-skinned subjects intermediate for intermediate skin tones and least for lightly pigmented individuals. Racial errors grew significantly at lower oxygen levels starting around 90 and growing widest in the 70s. In principle, the implications can be troubling. Indeed, while the oximeter is a key tool for some patients in deciding when to go to the hospital, it's also the, uh, what they use at the hospital. Clinical guidance about giving oxygen tends to be loosely keyed at a certain threshold of oxygen saturation. For example, protocols recommend uh, particular interventions at 88, 90 and 92%. An error margin of 1 to 4% may not feel big enough. But the problem is that it is associated only with non-white patients. Most hospital protocols now recommend starting oxygen at 90. Below that threshold, damage to vital organs such as the heart, brain, lungs and kidneys become an imminent danger. In mixed general population, a true blood oxygen saturation of 88% on average produces a pulse ox reading of 89 to 90 using the most common meter in hospitals. In that case, guidelines uh, would correctly suggest going on oxygen, but black patients, usually at crisis at 988, would get an average reading of 91, just above the intervention threshold. Physicians disagree on the clinical significance of these discrepancies. Do slight racial errors really matter in practice? 
Like any vital sign, pulse ox readings are one among many factors considered when making a critical care decision. Most caregivers have noted that a nurse or a doctor would draw on a full range of other information, uh, use their training and pick out patterns and place numbers in a broader context alongside a patient's perceived sense of distress. These concerns don't end with clinical practice either. Medical reimbursement also uh, uses pulse ox measures as a key threshold. At a reading of 88 or 89, uh, Medicare will reimburse for oxygen, but at 90, it won't. In effect, this means people with darker skin may have to be sicker than people with white skin in order to equal, be equally treated. On top of this, pulse ox data is a key vital sign being fed into algorithms that are increasingly used in the hospitals. As reported in Nature and Science, Patients of color have to be sicker on average in order to receive the same interventions as white patients. They are less likely to be promptly identified for ICU admission even with otherwise identical profiles. With pulse ox disparities, what are machines learning from these distorted in inputs? These patent errors are disturbingly symbolic traces of whose safety our institutions and technologies were built for, leaving people of color to hope that uh, less than equal would be good enough. Truly rethinking collective safety and justice means teaching the next generation and trying to learn ourselves. How to build worlds that don't normalize any margin of error based on the color of the skin? Do you think that this unequal margin of error is significant enough? Let me know in the comments below. I would like to thank my friend Prerna for helping me make the script for this episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.